to war rather than closer to peace? I would say that that is because that's all that most of the people have been hearing in political dialogue from one side since we've been here in the three and a half years that I somehow have an itchy finger and I'm going to blow up the world. And uh, that has all been duly reported by so many of you uh, that that is the tone that the people have been getting. And uh, it doesn't do me any good to tell you that having seen four wars in my lifetime, I don't know of anyone in or out of government that is more determinedly seeking peace than I am. All right, folks, so welcome back. I'm so excited to, uh, to be talking with Ken Edelman. And Ken, a former director of the U.S. Arms Control and Disarmament Agency and main advisor to uh, President Ronald Reagan during uh, the Cold War arms uh, control negotiations and the author of a, a really a fascinating book, um, Reagan at Reykjavik, uh, The Weekend That Ended the Cold War. And Ken, I, thank you for coming on, sir. Nice comments about the book. I'm glad uh, you enjoyed reading it. Oh, I, this this is this is. I mean, this is. There's nobody who could have an interest in in world affairs and our history and and be able to put this down from from your perspective. I mean, it's just fascinating. And you know, I, you know, I just want to point out right right off the top. You know, when you talk about when you were in the presence of Ronald Reagan, how I, I think I don't know if you said the hairs on the back of your neck stood up or something. You were so in awe of him. Uh, you know, I, 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 the closest I ever got to Ronald Reagan was the Rose Garden when the 1986 world champion New York Mets uh, came there to, to be greeted by him. And I was fortunate enough to fly on the plane with the Mets and be there as well. But um, I'm sure I would have gotten the same goosebumps and hair raising if I actually had a chance to, to get even closer because I was I was thrilled to be where I was. But I, I wish I had an hour to talk to you. But this weekend uh, with Gorbachev, um, it, 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 caught, it, it caught Reagan by surprise, uh, in effect. I mean, Gorbachev was, was talking about all of a sudden he agreed to, to, uh, to the end of nuclear weapons, correct? Yeah, what happened, Steve, is, it's, it's a, first of all, it's a wonderful story. It has highs and lows. It has emotional uh, just uh, flooding of happiness and depth of the depression. It has surprise after surprise after surprise. And the whole weekend, Steve, reminds me less of a summit than it does of a Agatha Christie mystery with a, a old creaky house in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> out isolated and desolate, thought to be haunted, with rain lashing at the windows, uh, and uh, two very vivid characters who are discussing the most amazing things in the world, like you just mentioned. And those two characters, Steve, are pretty special. And you're right about Ronald Reagan was that special, and Mikhail Gorbachev was. They're two of the most important and charismatic characters in the 20th century. And uh, the fact is that um, what happened there were the consequences were quite amazing. And the subtitle of the book, the book, of course, is called Reagan at Reykjavik. The subtitle of the book is The 48 Hours That Ended the Cold War. And the thesis is that this weekend led to the end of the Cold War. Yeah, and and there's so much like you. You're right. It does read like a, like like a, a, the, the books you described, and and I can imagine the setting. Uh, I mean, here we had you know Gorbachev saying, "Okay, yeah, I'm I'm all for getting rid of nuclear weapons, ridding the world of nuclear weapons." And Reagan says, "You know, well, why why not do it? Why wait till the next century? Let's do it now." But then it turned out that Gorbachev was you know speaking in generalities, but really didn't mean it. And 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 then even Reagan, as you relate in the book, was talking about uh, and maybe not uh, you know term terminology that that kind of intertwined the different kinds of missiles and 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 maybe didn't include all of that that Gorbachev had thought uh, should be banned so they, they maybe weren't on the same page in fact Reagan I believe after the summit really regarded it as a failure in the immediate aftermath correct well everybody uh, to be fair to Reagan on this Steve everybody regarded it as a failure it was only the next year when the most sweeping arms control agreement in history was signed in the East Room of the White House that people thought, my gosh, that's, that was really significant. It was signed on the basis of what they had discussed at Reykjavik. It would have been agreed to at Reykjavik, but the whole point was that Gorbachev wanted Reagan to compromise I'm and to really kill the program of SDI, SDI the Star yeah, Wars program. Yeah, yeah. And Reagan was smart enough to be able to sit down with the Soviets, 
but also stand up to the Soviets. Yeah, no, a a absolutely. And, and uh, of course, uh, didn't Reagan also uh, kind of offer to, uh, to share SDI technology with uh, the, the Soviets? Yes, he did offer to share SDI because he thought that it was something that would benefit all of mankind. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, the, 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 it's just a fascinating scenario. Uh, and you know what we had there, uh, as you well know, Ken, uh, probably bet much better than I, we, we had uh, all along, and the re one of the reasons maybe why, why you know, the Soviets never launched at us, uh, uh, the doctrine of mutually assured destruction. And uh, we don't have that today with a country like Iran, for instance, because if you go to the imams who run the country or the ayatollahs who run the country, their religious philosophy is Armageddon is going to bring back this missing imam or prophet and uh, the world will be destroyed and all Muslims will go to heaven. And that's that's, you know, kind of their goal. So, um, it, you know, talk about the, the, the difference. I mean, how, how would a Ronald Reagan have dealt with Iran, um, do you believe? Well, Ronald Reagan had two uh, qualities that were quite amazing in there, well documented in this book, Steve. One is he really had a strategy of dealing with the Soviet Union. On the way to the 1980 Republican Convention, when he was flying to Detroit for, to be nominated as the presidential nominee, uh, a friend of his, a political advisor, Steve Spencer, said to him, Ron, why are you doing this? Why do you want to be president? And he said, to end the Cold War. And he had a philosophy on its ending. He said it'll end by we win and they lose. So the first thing he did was have a wonderful overall strategy. The second is that he really did um, have courage. He had enormous courage of his convictions, and he saw things out. And he's, he, I was two days ago with uh, Secretary of State George Schultz, who was at Reagan's side, uh, you know, for the – most of the eight years that he was president. And Schultz made the, the point that Reagan was of the opinion that you don't cock a rifle unless you're willing to fire it. You don't make a threat that something is going to be unacceptable unless you go and you just will not accept it at the end. So Reagan was uh, somebody who really showed enormous conviction, and that kind of conviction, from my experience of 12, 14 years in the government, was quite rare in government. Yeah, and and you know, and you, I think by implication, when you you could be referring, I don't know if you are, to the red line that uh, President Obama drew with Syria. Well, there are lots of instances. Yeah. There are lots of instances, Steve, since Ronald Reagan, where a president has said, "There's a red line. This is un unacceptable. We're not going to tolerate this." And then what happens? It's crossed, and you go and you tolerate it. Let, let, let me let me get back to SDI because I believe that you you uh, uh, say that SDI became the straw that broke uh, the, the, the communist camel's back. Correct? Yes. Explain. After Reykjavik, at Reykjavik, the um, Gorbachev really wanted SDI, the Star Wars program, to be killed. So he really made Ronald Reagan what he thought was an offer that Reagan couldn't refuse. What he learned at Reykjavik, much to his horror, was that there was no offer that Reagan couldn't refuse when it came to SDI. He just wanted to retain the program. All right. So then the other alternative for him was to reform the Soviet Union so it could compete with the United States on high-tech programs like SDI. After he got back from Reykjavik, he ordered a acceleration of the reforms and a... <clears throat> real speed up in everything that was changing about the Soviet society. Those reforms were done in a very slipshod manner, uh, very poorly done, and they led to the unwinding of the Soviet Union. Very interesting, yeah, very, very interesting theory, absolutely. What do you think of Putin? What do you think Putin's trying to accomplish, and how would Reagan uh, differ in his handling of Putin than, than Obama, do you think? I mean, Obama stands there and, it, and announces sanctions and literally says, nothing personal, uh, 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 Vladimir. Yeah, I think Reagan would have been far more forceful. He would have had an overall strategy and certainly would have had more courage than we can see on the scene today. I, I don't think, however, Steve, that it's a return to the Cold War. And I say that because the conditions are very, very different. The our, our Russian army of today is one-fourth the size of the Soviet army at the time of Reykjavik. The Russian nuclear force is less than a fourth, probably a fifth, of what it was at the time of Reykjavik. 
the economy of Russia is about the same level as the economy of Italy and going down. And fourthly, uh, they don't have any overall ideology like Marxism that would appeal to people in Cuba and Angola and right. Cambodia and far flung. They have Russian nationalism, and Russian nationalists nationalism is wonderful for Russian nationalists. Gotcha, but that's but about it. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't translate else, right beyond. Russia. Hey, Ken, yeah. great, great, great talking to you. I hope you'll come back. Uh, it's uh, Reagan at uh, Reykjavik, and uh, it's the weekend that ended the Cold War by Ken Edelman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Steve, for doing Give me fives next. What if I told you that you could reverse diabetes and stop taking your diabetes medication?